Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of RCC Studies. I'm Ramon and I'm here with Barbara. Always good to do this with you, Barbara. Thank you. Um, we are looking at uh, two passages, uh, looking at Amos 5 verses 21 to 24 and Amos 8 verses 4 to 6. Uh, so Barbara, maybe you can help us uh, get a bit of context. What sort of happened in the chapters before mm -hmm. leading to the passages that we're going to be looking at today? When I was looking through the whole book of Amos, it struck me that at the beginning, the first couple of chapters, he's uh, the Lord is giving accusation and judgment against the nations that surround Israel. And they're um, quite short, mostly focusing on their cruelty and war. But um, when he gets to Israel, his um, criticism goes on and on and on. He's got many, many things he wants to, to deal with them about. And I think that's because he is in a covenant relationship with them. Yeah. He talks in that passage before about having brought them out of Egypt. Um, all the things he's done to bless them, to cause them to flourish, and um, and then after this uh, passage, um, he talks a little bit about uh, all the things he's done to try to bring them back when they've gone astray, yeah. and they're not coming back. Yeah. So. Yeah. So that leads us into a uh, specific complaint that we see in this passage. Let me let me read this and then mm -hmm. uh, let's chat a little bit about it. Uh, so Amos five verses twenty one to twenty four. I hate. I despise your feasts. And I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the peace offerings of your fatted animals, I will not look upon them. Take away from me the noise of your songs. To the melody of your harps, I will not listen. But let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever flowing stream. Chapter eight, verses four to six. Hear this, you who trample on the needy and bring the poor of the land to an end, saying, when will the new moon be over that we may sell grain? And the Sabbath, that we may offer wheat for sale, that may, we may make the ephah small and the shekel great, and deal deceitfully with false balances, that we may buy the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals, and sell the chaff of the wheat. So, you know, as I as I look at this, uh, I'm just really struck, uh, almost viscerally, just how how, how direct uh, the word is in terms of um, his description of how much he basically hates their religion, their worship. I mean, look, it says, I, I hate, right? Take no delight. Uh, I will not accept them. Uh, and he's talking about this is their feast, their solemn assemblies, burnt offerings, grain offerings, their peace offerings. I will not look upon them. Uh, then take away from me the noise of your songs. All these things are uh, things that we would say oh, that those are, uh, and those trying to, I, what I was trying to put myself in this place, mm -hmm. what it would have been like. And if I'm a, a faithful Jew at that point, uh, an Israelite, I'm, like, I, I'm doing the worship. I'm doing all the things that God wants me to. And God is saying, I hate them. I don't want them. Um, and it's just a reminder of, of the fact that there's, we can't just take for granted that God is just likes our worship because we show up and do it. Um, I mean, there's other things we could say related to this, but uh, it strikes me that what the reason, I mean, this will get into more than some of the other passages, but God's concern is the fact that they're doing all these things, but there is no justice, right? Uh, again, this idea of, uh, and this is, I mean, here's a famous verse, right, that the, uh, Dr. King quoted, but let justice roll down like waters, uh, let righteousness like an ever-flowing stream, begins to orient us towards the things that God really cares about. Um, now you, you sort of touched a little bit on this, this idea of covenant relationship. Mm -hmm. you, you're, we were talking before a little bit about how you think this, this factors into it. I think he's, um, I think the Lord sees worship as a relationship, and there's no relationship going on here yeah. in this. Um, what do you mean, no relationship? They, they're not present. It sounds to me okay. when you when you look down here, it says they're um, they're saying, "When will the new moon be over that we may sell grain, huh. um, and the Sabbath that we may offer wheat for sale?" They're 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 not focused on God. They have other things in their mind, that business that they're going to do, and. Um, and there's no relationship on God's end. He says, I'm not having this. Well, business so, is not bad, right? What? Doing business. No, is business not is not bad, but you do have, um, you do have the way they're doing business okay. down here. False balances. <laughs> um, they're, they're making the F a small and the shekel great. They're selling chaff with the wheat. That's not the nourishing part. That's the part you throw out. Yeah. Um, so a connection between worship and like the rest of their lives, right? Right. Yeah. Like they almost disconnected it. Is that what you're saying? Yes. And. I think that they're, um, if they can't worship God and 
um, if they're worshiping God and not honoring people that are made in God's image, yeah. there's a disconnect there. There's something that's not right and God doesn't like that. That's why this let justice roll down, it's so connected. Yeah. What, what we do with um, the people around us is very um, important to God. Yeah, I mean, this idea of uh, you trample on the needy, mm -hmm. the poor, the land, to an end. Um, yeah, I don't know if we often connect uh, our worship to how we treat uh, people, particularly the people who might be most overlooked, the people on the margin, uh, again, the poor, the land, and needy, that the fact that it's possible for us. I mean, if you look at this, I mean, the psalm assemblies, the noise of their songs, the fat and animals, like that sounds like good worship, <laughs> right? On the face of it, you would say like, this is the kind of thing where you, I think they'd, they'd say the people who showed up, this is amazing church, right? <laughs> this is, uh, if, we were, if this was happening today, look at them. I mean, the noise of their songs, the fat and animals, they're bringing good stuff. Right. They're doing all the things that would make you say, what a great worship service. And God's saying, pathetic, yeah. terrible. Yeah. Because guys is actually, all that stuff is is really, it's, that's not the whole point of it. The, I might say all those trappings, if we can put it that way, only really matter to agree in which it reflects a heart reality. And a heart reality that is actually demonstrated <laughs> socially. Uh, I mean, this is if I, I think the concept of social justice does fit a little bit here, right? Mm -hmm. In the sense that how we treat people within our society, the justice and the righteousness that we do, he, in Hebrew, justice and righteousness are related terms. Right. Um, that really, that's really significant. That really matters. Yeah. I think that um, there are many things in the Book of Amos that he is uh, calling them out on. Um, they're doing this kind of worship, but at, at the same time, they're not exclusively worshiping God. There's yeah. passages in Amos where they're also worshiping um, other gods, and certainly in, in this passage here, they're worshiping money yeah. um, as the, the primary goal in their lives. Yeah. Does this make you, um, I mean, should would you say that we as uh, today, as God's people today, uh, should take more, uh, I, mean, I don't know, I would love to speak for myself, it challenges me to think like who, what are the ways in which I might be doing this? Because I think it's it's amazingly easy for us to to do like great worship, right? And think that we're just go through the motions of those different things, and yet I ask, um, am I practicing justice and righteousness in a way that it, like it says roll down like waters, right? Yeah, it's a beautiful um, image. Uh, like ever flowing stream. That's like it's really there. It's really present, mm -hmm. abundant. It's not like a little bit of thing on the side. You know, hey, we helped this one person, but just no, like it's almost part of our life, part of our worship, right? Worship seen as a daily thing. I mean, it makes me think of the marginalized in our communities. Uh, I'm thinking of immigrants, I'm thinking of refugees, I'm thinking of homeless, uh, I'm thinking of kids in foster care, um, like who are the poor in our community, right, uh, in our land, uh, and what are the ways in which my worship shows that I see them, I notice them, I treat them as being made in the image of God. Um, I know that's just something, some of the things that just strike me as I, as I look at pastors like this. I think there's a power dynamic going on here. You have you have people with power taking advantage of people without oh, power. Wow. And I think <laughs> if we look at our lives and say, where do we have power? Yeah. And are we um, using that power for justice and righteousness? Yeah. Are, are we watching out for those who don't have power? Yeah. Or are we just using that power for our own advantage? Yeah. Power is not bad, but what do we, right. how do we use it for? Okay. We use it for the benefit of others. Yeah. That's good, Barbara. Awesome. That's a lot more in Amos. <laughs> <laughs> no, Amos is a great book. Yeah. Uh, I encourage you uh, to take time to, to read through it or even uh, get one of those Bible audio apps, uh, listen through it. Uh, it'll benefit, uh, benefit you in a lot of ways. It will challenge you. Be ready to be challenged, provoked, uh, but in all the ways that uh, we need to be if we're going to be faithful to the Lord. That's right. Great. Thanks for watching. Thank you.